Russian ruble plunges nearly 30% against the dollar amid sanctions over Ukraine invasion. Whoa! Whoa! And it's gone. Please like the video, please subscribe, and catch me every weekday after market close on the Smarter Gambling Show. Since we are an investment channel here, we are going to cover the big story, the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, specifically about the sanctions that have been imposed on Russia and how that is affecting their overall economy. And later on, we're going to discuss how that may affect our economy. Let's first start off with some latest updates. Biden administration expands sanctions against Russia, cutting off U.S. transactions with Central Bank. The Biden administration announced sanctions against Russia's Central Bank on Monday, a move that prohibits Americans from doing any business with the bank as well as freezes its assets within the United States. The new measures will also target the National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation and the Ministry of Finance of the Russian Federation. A Biden administration official who spoke on the condition of anonymity in order to share Washington's thinking said the new sanctions will take effect immediately. All right, so yeah, over the weekend, a lot of countries came out and sanctioned the hell out of Russia, European countries, and the U.S. They're not done just yet. They had some pretty severe sanctions, the biggest ever, and it's not done yet. The U.S. issuing even more severe sanctions than before. So how have these sanctions affected the Russian economy? So over the weekend, everyone was saying it's going to take time. This is a long-term thing. They're not going to feel it immediately, but give it a little bit, and eventually Russia will feel the pain. <laughs> Nope, apparently it's working immediately. Big crisis going on in Russia right now, economically. Economic sanctions cripple Russian economy as ruble plunges, interest rates soar. Economic sanctions levied by the U.S. and allies have sent everyday Russians flocking to ATM dozens deep in the hopes of withdrawing cash. Russians want to withdraw their rubles either to spend them on physical goods insulated from inflation or to swap them for stable currencies like the U.S. dollar or euro. The prolonged drop in the value of the ruble would ultimately translate into a lower standard of livings for Russians. Any goods or commodities Moscow imports from wheat and soybeans to medical supplies will be magnitudes more expensive, as well as foreign travel. So yeah, the people suffering the most are the everyday citizens from Russia and Ukraine. Pretty sad. They wanted no part of this war, and they're paying dearly from a political beef. So more on that. Russian ruble plunges nearly 30% against the dollar amid sanctions over Ukraine invasion. And it's gone. The ruble was trading as low as 119 per dollar as offshore trading started on Monday morning during Asia hours from nearly 84 per dollar the previous day, according to FactSet data. Russian President Vladimir Putin put his country's nuclear deterrence forces on high alert Sunday. Pretty scary there. This guy's nuts. Last week, President Joe Biden responded to Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine by announcing several rounds of sanctions on Russian banks on the country's sovereign debt and Putin and Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The value of the Russian ruble has gone down a third of its price in a day here. That is pretty nuts. Imagine if the dollar went down 30%, we'd be going crazy over here. So uh, this is very serious, very serious. Again, pretty sad because it's not even the fault of the Russian citizens. Long lines at Russia's ATMs as bank run begins with more pain to come. Analysts say Russia's central bank announced it would more than double its key interest rate from 9.5% to 20% in an attempt to stabilize the ruble. The central bank also introduced some capital controls to limit how much money could leave the country. This is a full-fledged bank run that's already underway. Maximilian Hess, a Russian economy expert and fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, told CNBC. Everyone rushing to withdraw their cash, and this is a very real possibility. A bank run is when... There is no more cash to be withdrawn. The banks run out of money. It's yet to be seen if that's going to be the case. Big panic, big crisis going on economically right now. And that would be a disaster if the people can't withdraw their money anymore. The government more than doubled the interest rate in a day here from 9.5% to 20%. That is insane. So they're trying to stabilize the ruble. But what they're going to do is actually cause a huge amount of inflation. I believe the latest news was that one ruble is less than one cent now, something like that. You may stabilize it in the short term. But in the longer term, what you're going to do is cause huge inflation to the ruble. That's very bad. Short term, they're doing as much damage control as they can, but this isn't going to end well. So what's going on in the stock market? How is the market responding to the Russian economy going under? Russian stocks, ETF, 
falls 30% as crisis in Ukraine continues. The Van Eck Russia ETF fell 30.6% Monday as the conflict in Ukraine continues. The Russian stock market remains closed and is yet to announce what its operating hours Tuesday will be. There are a few big Russian ETFs, apparently Van Eck Russia is the biggest one, and that went down 30% in one day. <laughs> And it's gone. The stock market in Russia was closed today because the government feared that there would be an all-out sell-off. So in order to stabilize the economy temporarily, they have closed the stock market so you can't sell anything. And tomorrow we'll see what the hours will be. If it's closed or limited hours or what. Really bad situation right now. So here in the foreign markets, everything is selling off in anticipation for the Russian stock market to sell off. This is really just prolonging the pain here. Inevitably gonna happen. The government trying to prevent a full out panic right now. The futures, foreign trading, everything is going down. And as soon as the Russian stock exchange opens up, same thing's gonna happen. Russian assets becoming uninvestable as sanctions bite, Goldman Sachs says. A key punitive measure announced by the US and Western allies aim to freeze the central bank of Russia's roughly $630 billion in foreign reserve stockpile. Kamaksha Trividi, co-head of foreign exchange rates and emerging market strategy at Goldman Sachs, told CNBC on Monday that this move would prove the most important to date as it removes Moscow's main and first line of defense against the depreciation of local assets. So Russia has a lot of money in foreign markets, $630 billion, and it's all going to be frozen and seized. So again, not great for the central bank, not great for the citizens of Russia. That's why a bank run is very possible, because there's not enough money to go around. And now let's get into some news about individual companies pulling the plug on their Russian asset exposure. Citigroup flags $5.4 billion exposure to Russian assets. The $5.4 billion exposure represents 0.3% of the bank's assets in 2021, according to a regulatory filing. The company warned of a potential hit from escalated tensions between the West and Russia following its invasion of Ukraine. So yeah, we have seen in the stock market lately, financial stocks, all the banks have been going down pretty hard. And that is because the market is anticipating a bunch of those assets being freezed. Yeah, Citigroup, $5.4 billion. That's part of the $630 billion the Russians have in foreign assets. So yeah, the sanctions hurt everyone because we are such a globalized economy. It's better when everyone is trading, everyone gets along, but this definitely hurts Russia the most. But in the short term, our economy, the European economy, everyone's going to suffer. We are imposing these sanctions and we are willing to take a short-term loss for the values that the West represents. Shipping giant Marisk considers suspension of all deliveries to and from Russia. Our preparations include a possible suspension of Marisk bookings to and from Russia on ocean and inland, Marisk said in a statement. The shipping giant said it was keeping a close eye on developments regarding Russia's actions. The US, European Union, Canada, and Britain have all announced sanctions targeting Moscow following Russia's invasion of Ukraine last week. Not only the market's getting sanctioned, global trade is going to stop as well, which is a big part of the Russian economy. Marisk has discretion on what they want to do right now, but soon it may be mandatory that trade to and from Russia stops. So again, if there's no more free trade, Russia is going to suffer the most, but this is going to affect all economies. Energy giant Shell to end partnership with Russia's Gazprom as Ukraine conflict intensifies. Shell said it's selling a 27.5% stake in Sakhalin 2, an integrated oil and gas project located on the Sakhalin Island in Russia, as well as a 50% interest in Salem Petroleum Development NV. We are shocked by the loss of life in Ukraine, which we deplore, resulting from a senseless act of military aggression, which threatens European security. Shell CEO Ben Von Buren said in a statement. The company said that it had about $3 billion in non-current assets through its Gazprom ventures at the end of 2021. Again, even individual companies taking a stance on Russia, even though they're not by law required to do anything. They're taking matters into their own hands. They don't agree with what's going on, cutting off business due to a difference in values. Really, the whole world is coming together, condemning what Russia is doing here from a micro perspective to a macro perspective. Bitcoin jumps 10% after Treasury imposes new sanctions against Russian central bank. The big jump in crypto today, specifically Bitcoin and Ethereum, has to do a lot with the whole Ukraine-Russia situation. All the citizens pulling their money, buying US dollars, euros, and I'm sure they're buying crypto as well, because even crypto is a better place to put your money than ruples right now. So very bullish for crypto. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of it had to do with Russians investing in crypto. So let's just quickly talk about 
how this whole situation in Russia can affect our markets here. So like I've been saying, the sanctions hurt everyone. Everyone is losing from this because we are such a globalized economy now. The world does a lot of trading with Russia, especially for oil and gas and other natural resources. Europe is hurting the most because they buy a lot of energy from Russia. But yeah, no one wins from this. Russia is going to suffer the most, but it's hurting the whole world, in the short term at least, while we figure this out. So if we look at SPY, I did predict that we may come back down to 400 because there is a gap here. We're not going to get too technical, but I'm usually the gaps do fill. So there was a gap up at 400. So I did predict on our previous shows, this might come back down to 400. We almost got there. This went down to 410 last week, and then we had a major run up in the days following. But it seems like most of the people in this community didn't really believe it. I didn't really believe it either. Uh, I thought it was just a fluke, maybe temporary. So at this point, I do think that 400 SPY is still very possible. Hopefully not. But all I'm saying is be prepared for the market to sell off. We may go back to 400 and possibly even lower. But I do think around 400 would be the bottom. So I hope I'm wrong, but be prepared, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching today. I appreciate you guys. Please like the video. Please subscribe and catch me every weekday after market close on the Smarter Gambling Show. You apes already know, diamond hands to the moon. I'm Ty. This is Smarter Gambling. See you guys tomorrow. Peace out.